Okay, I'm sitting here today on some rough cut Adirondack furniture that we built. And now it needs to take the next step, which is to get finished. It's gonna be sitting outside and uh, it's gonna be taking a beating from the sun, the rain, the wind, just the weather elements. And so what we're gonna to wanna to do is add a finish to it. Now, part of that, before we actually get to adding a finish, we're gonna to need to add wood filler. So let's, we're gonna walk through in this video how to add wood filler and some of the things you need to consider as you do it. It's actually a very easy process. Let's talk about some of the situations where you might want to add wood filler. Now you could go ahead and move on to sanding or even skip sanding and just add a finisher to this as it is. Um, and a lot of people prefer to do that. This is a rough cut lumber. It's made out of, in this case, um, redwood. And then we have some cedar planks and you know, very standard wood you'll find at your local big box store, wherever you grab your wood. And that would be fine. That's, um, that's that would be a little bit more of a, of a outdoor weathered look, but if you want to, uh, go ahead and touch up some of the areas of the wood that have been damaged as you build it or came damaged. That's where you would want to use wood filler. Well, what are we talking about when we talk about damage? A couple of different things. First off, whenever you use nails or drive screws through something, especially when it's an area that's visible, well, it's going to leave a mark. It's going to leave a hole. It's going to leave an indentation. And uh, if you're doing fine wood working, you're usually doing some sort of joinery that isn't going to have those marks. But if you're doing this somewhat DIY job on furniture, well, you're probably gonna have some of these marks. In this case, we have quite a few nail holes and they're pretty deep, to be honest with you. It's a perfect candidate for wood filler. Another situation where you might have that is if you have wood that gets split or has kind of deep grooves in the grain, you might wanna add a wood filler there to cover the split. And again, if you're using nails or screws, sometimes the wood will split a bit on you if you go down in too far. So these are the types of situations that you'll want to use a wood filler. Now, the good thing is that sometimes, and we've done this in some of our videos before, you can take real rough cut lumber, and then you can spend a decent amount of time on the back end in filling the wood, sanding it down really well, and then doing a really nice stain job. And you can take this relatively cheap lumber and make it look pretty good. Pretty good. We've had a lot of success with that. If you want to see that, we can uh, we'll include a link to some of the videos we've done before that showcase that. But we're talking today about how to apply wood filler. So once you've made the decision to apply it, you're going to have to pick up a wood filler. Our two favorites are the Minwax Stainable Wood Filler and the Family Wood Stainable Wood Filler. Um, we've done a review of which of these we actually like better, but they're both great. So whichever one you want to go with is fine. You're also going to need to apply it. And these are just your standard... Uh, spackle knives, uh, putty knives that you can get at your, again, you, they're very cheap. You, you, you could, they make really nice um, metal ones, but honestly for this, the plastic will work just fine because you're not doing anything fine or fine woodworking on that. And so what we're gonna do next, once you have these, these are the only two materials you really need. We're gonna go ahead and move on to applying the wood filler. All right, so again, here we have some deep nail holes that are in the arm of the chair, uh, the Adirondack bench here. Um, and so what we're gonna do is try to fill these entirely all the way to the top with wood filler. All I do is just take my putty knife and I get, you know, a dollop size amount on there. And you can go with the grain, you can go against the grain. And you're, what you're trying to do here is you're trying to work the wood filler in all the way into the hole. And you don't wanna short change yourself. You don't wanna to stop too soon. Obviously that is not full all the way with wood filler, but believe it or not, that's not either. There's still a slight cupping that's happening there. And that's gonna be noticeable. Um, once you're done sanding and then when you add the, uh, the stain to it. And so you're really trying to kind of work that filler in deep to the, uh, to the hole there. And you might need to come back a little bit and add a little bit more and kind of work it in a little bit. If it's really deep, you might need to do what would be considered a second coat. Um, don't worry about getting the wood filler um, on areas outside of the hole because you're gonna come back and sand this and that's gonna come right off in the sanding. Doesn't mean you wanna coat it heavily um, but it wouldn't affect anything. Um, depending on how deep that hole is, you might want to cover it just like we did right there. And so right there, you're going to see that I basically covered the area and it's actually above the wood itself. And that's the recommended best practice. The reason is because it's going to allow it to harden inside the hole and then we're going to come and just sand it off. But we don't run the risk in this case of underfilling it and leaving that cupping. You can also apply wood filler to knots. And so you probably wouldn't want to apply it to a knot that didn't have a deep gouge or at least um, some depth to the wood missing. But here we can see that this knot is missing part
part of the wood and there's a hole in that. Now again, you might like that look, you might like that feel, and you might like having that hole there, but if you wanted to fill that in, wood filler also works well there. And again, it's the same practice, except in this case, you're really trying to make sure that you work the filler in all the way into the depth there of that hole. And uh, it's anyone's guess, to be honest with you, on whether that will um, come out stained and still show the knot or whether the knot will disappear. You'll still be able to see at least the remnants of the knot, the circle, the darker circles around it. But that wood filler fills in there and really uh, will, will fill in the gaps that was left by the knot. So earlier I was using the Minwax and the Minwax has a, a real pebbly feel to it. Um, they're both latex based, so they're both similarly made. The Famo wood has is more of a, a oily nature to it. And so it does apply a little bit differently. Um, I want to show you both. Maybe it might influence your decision about which to put on. Um, you can see that this is a lot more, uh, uh, well, oily. I mean, I don't really know how else to put it. It's a lot, it's a lot more wet. Um, and it definitely goes on with a different color, uh, whether or not that, uh, that actually becomes a challenge for you probably depends a bit on the wood that you're using, but, um, it does apply differently. And I found it takes a little bit longer to use the Famo wood, um, due to its kind of foilish nature. Uh, it dries pretty similarly as we'll see to the, uh, to the, the Minwax but you're gonna have to kind of go back and forth a little bit more. It still doesn't take a ton of time, but um, it, it seems to not lay on that nice little top layer quite as easily. And there we go. I think that's gonna be pretty good. Now you'll see a bump there. You'll see a little ridge, but again, don't be too alarmed by that because um, uh, this stuff does tend to shrink once it dries. Uh, not dramatically, but you'll find that it does shrink a little. So it's a, just yet another reason why you wanna make sure that you have uh, not a cupping, not an indentation, but you have a little bit more over top of it. We can sand that down so it'll be fine. All right, we're all done with the wood filling. So let's go ahead and jump quickly into sanding, staining, and applying a wood finisher. And then we'll come back and take a look at how the stainable wood filler actually applied and how it looks when everything's all said and done. All right, so we're all done with the staining and we've added a uh, varnish, uh, a spar varnish actually, to protect these for the outdoor. And we can kind of evaluate now how our wood filling worked. And what you're gonna see is that it worked very, very well. Um, I'm, I'm letting the exposure be a little high here so you can actually see. The wood is actually a little bit darker, but the way the camera is picking up on it is brighter. So you can kind of see what happened here, but you can see barely some evidence of where we filled the wood holes. But again, it's one of those things where you're really gonna have to know it's there to identify it. And that's one of the more prominent ones. If we look around over here at the other arm, you can see that there's basically no evidence that we filled the wood in here. I'm gonna come down and you can see down here, there's a little bit of evidence that we filled this little wood hole right here. But by and large, it just does such a great job, especially when you overfill and then you sand it down. I think those are probably the big keys as you're looking at how to do this, is to overfill a bit and then sand down. Um, for the most part, we cannot see much evidence of any wood holes uh, that we filled here. So that's the great part about a stainable wood filler, is if you're planning on staining something, then it can be absolutely wonderful because you can fill these wood holes without having to have any effects. And you might want to keep some of those wood holes uh, if you're not staining. But if you're staining something and to give it a little bit more of a robust and uh, professional looking finish, well, look at how great of a job it does. All right, so that does it. If you like this video, please go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe for future content, and uh, we'll see you guys the next time around. Thank you so much.